are Christians inconsistent in their use and application of Old Testament law today? I was at church one Sunday and a friend's brother was visiting. After the service, he picked up my Bible, began to leaf through it, got to the book of Leviticus and said, ah, Leviticus. Then he looked up at me and he asked this question, do you eat shellfish? Now in my case, the answer was, of course not. That's disgusting. I don't know why anyone would eat shellfish. I can't stand that. But he was asking, of course, a really important question. What he was getting at is, is this. Why is it that uh, Christians will not follow some laws of the Old Testament, like laws in Leviticus that talk about uh, clean and unclean animals and that say you cannot eat shellfish, and yet these same Christians will say other laws from Leviticus uh, do need to be followed, like laws concerning sexual ethics. I would be the first to admit, and Christians need to admit, that throughout the, the history of the church, uh, many Christians have been inconsistent, completely inconsistent in their use and application of Old Testament law. But I would hasten to add that many Christians have been incredibly thoughtful in terms of trying to answer the question, how and when does Old Testament law apply today? There's, in fact, a vast literature on this topic. And let me summarize for you one uh, response that I found helpful. The laws of the Old Testament uh, were given as part of a covenant that God established with the Israelites at Mount Sinai. When Jesus came, he established a new covenant. Uh, the old one is no longer in force. And what that means is that the laws of the old covenant do not necessarily apply in the same way today. That word necessarily is important for two reasons. First, uh, many of the laws of the old covenant are repeated in the new. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That comes from Leviticus 19 of all places repeated no less than six different times in the New Testament. Uh, laws on uh, sexual ethics, you'll find some of these repeated in the New Testament at different places, like Romans chapter 1 or 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So some of these laws are repeated. The second reason why it's important to say these laws don't necessarily apply in the same way is simply this. Laws represent the values of the lawgiver. We understand that intuitively. We have laws in our society, for example, against murder. Why? Because we value human life. Our laws represent our values. Well, it's the same with Old Testament law. These laws represent the values of the Lord. And those values are ongoing and meant to teach us something about how to live life today. So let me give you two examples. Uh, first example, clean and unclean animals. Leviticus chapter 11, God says, I want you, my people, to distinguish between animals that are ritually clean and animals that are ritually unclean. Why? What's the value behind that? Well, as you read Leviticus, you see the reason the Lord wants his people to make these distinctions at the ritual level is to remind them, here's the value, you must be a people who makes these same distinctions at a moral level between the clean and the unclean, between that which is just and that which is unjust, between uh, love and between hatred. That's what I've created you to do and to be. So what happens then when we come to the New Testament? Jesus says, Mark chapter 7, look, in the New Covenant, you no longer need to make those distinctions ritually between clean and unclean animals. That implies, of course, you can eat shellfish. You can have a, a ham sandwich or enjoy your bacon. But Jesus goes on to say, uh, in that same chapter, in that same passage, those who follow me are people who are going to be making these distinctions between the clean and the unclean in their hearts with regard to moral issues. My followers are to be people who distinguish between love and hatred, between injustice and justice. 
That's what my followers do. That's, in fact, what's, what God has created humanity to do. You can see how the value of the Old Testament law is carrying over. Uh, second example, laws on sexual ethics. Uh, we've, I've already noted many of these laws are repeated in the New Testament. Uh, but even if they're not, what's the value behind them? Well, uh, uh, an Israelite reading these laws would have understood them against the backdrop of Genesis chapter 2, where God gives his model of how sexuality is to be expressed, which is to say in the context of marriage, marriage between a man and a woman. That's a value that is ongoing today. In fact, Jesus, when he's looking for a model for marriage, which is the only place biblically that you're supposed to express sexual relationship, what does Jesus do? He points back to Genesis 2. He says, there it is, that's the model. And so, of course, followers of Jesus are going to be looking to Genesis 2 for our model of, of what should inform our sexual ethic. All that to say that certainly some Christians have been completely inconsistent in how they've used and applied Old Testament law but other Christians have put a lot of careful thought into it and have helped us to understand how to use and apply Old Testament law in a way that's consistent.